Introduce yourself. Yuknin Stanislav Olegovich. Date of birth. November 23rd, 89. Place of birth. Kurgan City. Do you voluntarily consent to the publication of this conversation? Yes. Why are you here? I was mobilized. They brought me here. What did they say? That is, to protect the civilian population of the city of Donetsk. Why protect them? I don't know. That is, Donetsk became. That is, it became part of the Russian Federation. That's why we were ordered to protect civilians. Have civilians asked you to protect them? Nobody asked me. And from whom to protect? I don't even know from whom. Just like that. You were told to protect. Defend and defend the Donetsk region. From whom? From the Ukrainians. I don't know. The first version is from the Ukrainians. Protect residents from the Nazis. Who are the Nazis? Sorry, from the Nazis. From whom else? From some ill-wishers. From ill-wishers. From the Americans. From the Americans. I don't know anymore. Okay, let's break this down point by point. From the Americans. How did you imagine it? They tell you, you will protect the residents from the Americans. Well, I heard that the Americans wanted to build a military base somewhere near Donetsk. Why do Americans need this? I don't know. I only heard rumors. Yes. That military bases in Ukraine are ready to be formed, and their actions will be aggressively directed towards Russia. Yes. This is bad? I think yes. That is, what is a military base for? In order to attack or for what? Probably to attack Russia. Well, for some reason they still need to build a military base towards Russia. Don't you think you are speaking in the future tense? The Americans needed to build a base, and you launched an attack on Ukraine. We did not attack Ukraine. No? I. We were told to defend Donbass, which had already become part of the Russian Federation. That is, Russia did not attack Ukraine? How can I say this? Tell it like it really is. We didn't attack, but I don't know how the conflict started. What happened on the 24th of February 2022? In fact, our troops. Yes, your troops. They sent troops to Ukraine. Yes. In connection with what, I don't know. We'll get to it. Do you want to know the truth? Certainly. You did not attack, but on the 24th you attacked. As reported in the news, yes, February 24, yes, our troops went towards Ukraine. They went to Ukraine. They attacked. <clears throat> to protect Donbass. Because some incomprehensible things have been happening in Donbass since 2014. And for some reason, I don't know, our government decided to help Donbass. It turns out that this is why it happened. Is the Kiev region Donbass? No. Chernigov region, Nikolaev region. I don't know. Kherson region? No. But you entered these areas on February 24th. All areas? Imagine, you entered with an army of 180,000 in six directions. From the north from fraternal Belarus, from the south and from the east. For you it's the other way around, in short, from the east, north and south. Yes. On that moment. Your Tsar has not yet included the Donetsk and Lugansk regions in his constitution. He did this later, in the summer of 2022. 2022. Yes. You asked me, we didn't attack you? Now I'll ask, did you attack us then? It turns out, yes, we attacked. If we came in from six directions, I didn't know about it. Why weren't you told about this? Maybe this was talked about in the news? No. No? They said that the troops were in the Kyiv region, and that Kyiv would capitulate in two days. Chernigov will fall in a day. 
Then, when your troops were defeated, you all left there. Then your troops were defeated in the Kharkov region, where you abandoned 200 units of equipment. <coughs> Have you heard about this? No, I didn't hear that. It was like that. We attacked. I don't know why we attacked. We will try to find out. Have you said this a thousand times already? Right? No, not a thousand, you're somewhere around the 700th. In 2022, you attacked like Nazi Germany did. You're an occupier? What does it mean? Direct meaning. No. No, why not? Prove it. Do you know what an occupier is? No. You do not know? Well, an occupier occupies something or someone. That's right, an occupier is an invader. Yes. Are you an occupier? No. Have you watched films about the Great Patriotic War? Yes it is. Did you like them? Hooray, victory. This whole story. Yes. Where the soldier heroically rushed at the tank. For motherland for Stalin. Complete heresy. What were Nazi German soldiers called back then? Fascists. Fascists, they were called occupiers because they occupied and captured territories. Why? Because at one time they treacherously, as they say, invaded the territory of the Soviet Union, and the Great Patriotic War began. This happened at four in the morning. I know it. Yes. If we compare the Great Patriotic War, the Nazis invaded the USSR and were called occupiers. If we compare this with your army, which on the night of February 23rd to 24th treacherously invaded the territory of an independent state in the amount of 180,000 people in six directions. No declaration of war. Can you be called occupiers? First, you fired at 80 targets with inaccurate missiles, you fired at peaceful cities, Kharkov and Chernigov, with landmines and Grad missiles. You're against. Why did we do this? Why did our government do this? I can't even understand. It became interesting, in short, to figure it out. Yes or no? Interesting. Yes. Did they just want to seize territory? Yes. For what? Because you have few territories. Few? We have enough territory. Seriously, right? You have huge territories. 140 million. Wow, you know the population of the country. Do you know the population of Ukraine? I don't know, maybe 13 million. If there are 13 million of us, and plus 8 million went abroad during the war. Yes. This is what they say and write all over the world. What prevented your army then? I don't know. Let's think about it. I'm actually wondering why in the 90s. Well, when the USSR collapsed, and countries left the Union. Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Georgia, Armenia. And yet they left. Chechnya. Chechnya is part of the Russian Federation. She was included in the composition by force. The first Chechen war, which you shamefully lost and then the Second Chechen War, which you won. How did Russia win? They probably agreed that Katerev would become president. Oh, that's right. They spent a lot of money there. They gave everyone money. And Kadyrov killed his compatriots and bribed everyone. I see that you, unlike many of your other colleagues, were interested in history. Let's try to find the answer. Why the hell does Putin need this? Here, basically, I don't know why. To be closer to Europe. I do not know why. Coal too. I don't know. Maybe some gas contracts. I don't know either. No. The Sea of Azov is not that big. Don't know. Population. Add another 40 to 140 million. What do you think? Resources. Territories. But there probably aren't that many resources. Well, I don't know, for me it's just some kind of nonsense. There are so many territories in Russia that no one lives there. So, maybe, let's come up with it, you can come up with it yourself, as a citizen of Russia. Why the hell are you here? For what? What is the goal? Well, you're unlikely. Maybe explain the meaning of the word denazification? 
This was said by your king on the 23rd. Denazification? What is this? Some kind of reset? Denazification. Oh, this. I don't know. I don't know why we're here. Let's go back to 2014. Maybe there is an answer there. In 2014. You broke into Donetsk and Lugansk. You annexed Crimea. Your army did it. Donetsk, Lugansk lived and lived. You should open the mortality statistics for the eight years you are talking about. 25 people have died in 2021. These are official DNR statistics. 2021. These are official DNR statistics. Can you show them? I know that the Ukrainians are now shelling. Well, the Ukrainians are shelling Donetsk almost every day. Three or four people became victims. And so on all the time. Yes, maybe. So what's here? Constantly. So what? Civilians too. It's okay that three days ago you destroyed an entrance in the peaceful city of Uman. 23 corpses, 5 children. Cruise missiles. Is it okay that you killed 300 children in the Mariupol drama theater with high explosive bombs? And Kharkov, northern Saltovka, residential area, at 4 in the morning 480 salvos from the graduate. Is it called that you don't shoot at civilians? I'm showing you the official statistics. The number of people killed as a result of military action in Ukraine over eight years. In 2021, 25 people, next year 26. In 2014, 2,084 people. The information above applies exclusively to civilian deaths. This information includes verified information from DNR and LNR representatives. According to a press release from LNR officials, there have been eight deaths in 2021 and DNR has won. I looked at statistics today with another prisoner of war. 44 people die every day on Russian roads in traffic accidents. 44 people die on your roads every day. And here at the DNR, 25 people died in a whole year. Was there a war there? No. No, this did not suit your king. And he decided to take Kiev in three days. The first prisoners of war with whom we spoke on February 25th a year ago. Vova and I have been talking with prisoners of war for a year now. You were simply told to take food for three days. We were told the same thing two or three days. So answer the question, what are you doing here? I can't know what I'm doing here. Is this how you can win a war? No. When a soldier doesn't know why he's here. When were you told that the war would end? Nobody said anything. A soldier must know when he will return home, when there will be victory. Nobody told us anything. We were simply mobilized and brought here. They didn't say. What if you refuse? I don't even know if the imprisonment is about 15 or 10 years. Cool scheme? What other options did you have? What else? I could go here to protect civilians. They wouldn't have to be protected if you hadn't come there. The way it is. Interesting? Yes, a lot of interesting things, what we don't know. Hello. Hello. Hello, where is my husband? Do you consent to the publication of the conversation? I agree, show me my husband. Why are you so impudent? Show me your husband. Why the hell should I? Because I'm that kind of wife. I love my husband very much. And so what? Well, why are you talking to me like that, why? Since you speak in a tone that is incomprehensible to me, in some kind of order, I must do something for you. Are you not embarrassed by the current situation? Wait, wait, man, do I know who you are? I know perfectly well who you are. And what? I know absolutely exactly who you are. At the moment you are a provocateur. For example, you will say that my husband killed at least one Ukrainian at least once, did he kill at least one? 
I did not conduct any examinations with him. I'm not a police officer, he still has everything ahead of him. Why then? Why then are you telling me why I am like this? Do you even know how he got there? He came there on mobilization. Do you know what mobilization is? I know. Did. Did he go there as a volunteer? Did he really come to our government and say, I want to sign a contract? I will go kill Ukrainians. My grandmother is Ukrainian, lives in Odessa. He is a man who absolutely belongs to his state. He is not a volunteer, he is not a contractor, he is nobody. He was called up for military service. You just said the key words, he is a nobody, and he is completely. He is a nobody. And he completely belongs to his state. Yes, he belongs to your king, and your king wanted and decided that he would go to a foreign country and die in it. This is the whole essence of your country. And when you... Please repeat. What then is the essence of Ukrainians? We defend ourselves at home from invaders like you. Can't you understand this? Are you not occupiers? Why are you not occupiers? Because my husband didn't go to war. My husband went to defend. My husband was told that you will go to defend the territory that already belongs to the Russian Federation. Have you answered the question of how this territory ended up being part of the Russian Federation? I do not want to answer. Give it a try. I'm telling you, no. What should I answer? Am I the president of this state? Or what? LNR and DNR have been recognized by the Russian Federation. Did you know that a referendum was held? The referendum achieved. That is, an agreement that they want to become part of the Russian Federation. My husband was taken to the territory of the Russian Federation, already to the active territory of the Russian Federation. Yes or no? This is absolutely not true. You will also say that Crimea was annexed according to the laws and rules. I. When did you talk to? I now know that my husband was captured. I ask you to show me my husband. Here he sits, your husband. He is here. When was the last time you talked to your grandmother from Odessa? Recently. When? How recently? Well, probably three weeks ago. What did she tell you? She is now in the USA. She's in the USA, now it's clear. When did she leave for the USA? Her daughter lives there. Even before the war? Before. Your grandmother is not in Ukraine, let's not talk about it. She left not so long ago when the war started. Why did she leave? You are liberators. Why did she leave? When Maiden began, she left. In what year did the Maiden begin? It was 2014. This means you don't have a grandmother in Ukraine. Your grandmother, your grandmother, she. My uncle is in Odessa, he didn't leave, he's there. When did you talk to him? When did you talk to him? He talks to us absolutely normally. And what does he say? Well, he says, thank you, thank you. I won't talk on camera now. Does he tell you, thank you for the missiles that are flying towards Odessa, where civilians are dying? He is not against us, he is not against us. Tell me his last name, first name, patronymic. I'll find out in 15 minutes and call him. Hello, honey. Hello, darling, hello. How are you doing? Fine? We are waiting for you. We are waiting for you and love you. We know from day one that you were captured. Yes. We are doing everything to get you out of there. Your son is waiting for you, I am waiting for you. We love you very, very much. Stas, you can't even imagine how much we love you. I love you all too. I love you all too. Are you all right? Yes, everything is fine. It's okay. Yes? 
Yes. Did they knock out your teeth? I found your videos on Telegram, where you give an interview from somewhere in the basement. I saw that your teeth were knocked out and your fingers were broken. Everything is fine. Do they use force? No. Everything is okay. Everything is fine? It's okay. Yeah. Darling, I will tell you only one thing. Please hold on, my love, we will get you out. Do you think I didn't experience much during the time my husband was in captivity? I think you haven't experienced anything. Why did my child sit in the basement for the entire year 2022, and you live there quietly? Answer this question for me, and then I will understand. What basement was your child in? In an ordinary basement, so that if a rocket falls, he won't be killed. In a bomb shelter. Why is it because of people like him that my child did not go to school for the entire year 2022? Why is Ukraine now saying that it is Ukraine and not Russia that is shooting? Are you even saying? You understand? Donetsk was shelled two days ago, and your people from the DNR say that it was Ukrainians, not Russians. Two days ago you destroyed the entrance to a residential building in Amman with a rocket. 23 corpses, 5 children. And before that in Dnieper. And before that in Odessa. And before that in Kyiv. And this happens every day. You launch your missiles from the Caspian Sea. Have you gone completely crazy there? Maybe you will open something other than Channel 1? It's unpleasant for me to talk when they tell me. This conversation is about nothing. When a person, there is a brain, and there are zombies. And there are zombies without a brain. Well, sorry, she's just on edge. What kind of nerves does she have? Well, why shouldn't I be on edge? I don't have a child? We have no children? Why can you go to bed here and not wake up? Because your king decided to destroy the high-rise building. Who are the fascists here? Why the hell did her husband come here? Why the hell is she calling me? Will you ever wake up, Russians? This is the first time I've been so nervous. Sorry about my wife. No, because I don't understand how you can call white black, how can she say that? He didn't go to war, he wasn't in the war. You are in captivity. What concept should we live by in this life? Are you a prisoner of war? Yes. Am I violating your rights? No. I raised my voice, the Red Cross won't like this. But when she says that her husband is not a military man, he joined the army, he was deceived, and he did not go to fight at all. But this is a circus. It's nonsense. You understand this yourself. How it works. I'm no soldier. I am an ordinary citizen of the Russian Federation. You are now repeating her words. You are an ordinary citizen who finds himself in captivity as a prisoner of war. Do you know the combatant status? The word is like this. No. Combatant, do you know who this is? No. This is a man who was in uniform with insignia, openly carried weapons and was captured. They are called combatants. Yes. It's not an offensive word. Our military are combatants. Is a policeman combatant? No, he's a policeman. No, a firefighter is combatant? They are not armed. Yeah, he's unarmed. Why the hell are your idiots taking our firefighters prisoner? Don't know. Why take civilian doctors prisoner? Don't know. Why take police prisoners? Probably because they have weapons. They are not military. Entering the cities on the 24th, you captured everyone you saw. Mayors of cities, deputies of local councils. You took prisoners for yourself. An army of terrorist marauders. She will claim that you are a civilian who did not want to fight. You are a person who did not want to go to prison, so you were sent to die in a foreign country. Excuse me, please, do you have something to say? No, I think not. Well it. And yet I became interested. This whole confusing situation. I'll try to find out more. Misunderstandings. I will study history. You won't search or watch anything. Fine. Will you reach out to your people? According to our tradition, prisoners of war ask their friends, should they come here? What should you take with you? 
No. What to take with you? You don't need to take anything with you. Come and die here. There's nothing to do here. Literally, go die and they will give you everything you need. Take the black bag.